Walter. Well, it's always uh, a challenge to speak at the end of a panel, uh, partly because the audience is, has, has heard a lot and is ready for you to speak very quickly and then move on. Uh, but at the other, on the other hand, sort of offsetting that disadvantage is the advantage that your fellow panelists have said almost anything of everything of interest on the topic. So I'm going to try to, uh, rather than speak broadly about uh, the role of the diplomat, to just focus on maybe one point that I think uh, was not brought out as fully as, as so many other very valuable ones by my fellow panelists. But the first thing I'd like to do is instead of congratulating a man on getting a job, I'd like to congratulate the, the nation of France on making an excellent appointment. And I would like to, to congratulate the Security Council on its forthcoming acquisition of a very, very distinguished ambassador. Uh, and I was also like to thank Gideon for a very kind introduction. Gideon is the sternest of my many taskmasters. <laughs> the deadline for the capsule reviews on the United States and foreign affairs is perhaps the, the largest force that destroys my peace of mind from it's one, the only deadline that one uh, period respects. to another. <laughs> and, even then. and the next <laughs> deadline, I believe, is on June 16th. And Gideon, I'll, I'll be ready. I'll okay. be ready. Uh, in, the, in American history, we actually did not appoint any ambassadors until the 1880s. Uh, the Congress of the United States refused to authorize this appointment because, after all, an ambassador, as defined at the Congress of Vienna, was the personal representative of one sovereign to another. And we, in the Republican, Democratic United States of America, didn't have a sovereign. We had a chief executive. And, he, and so <laughs> our ambassadors only, our, our top diplomats only held the rank of minister which meant they came below in precedence the, the representatives of every other great power. And furthermore, for most of the 19th century, they weren't allowed to wear court dress or any sorts of decorations, which meant they were frequently mistaken for waiters at diplomatic functions. So the, the uh, diplomats of the United States have a long and somewhat checkered career in trying to represent this, this rather strange country abroad. Today, I think diplomats have to do many things, and very, very ably my fellow panelists have outlined uh, most of those. I would like to concentrate on one element, that today in virtually every country and society in the world, there is a gap between popular sentiment and the expectations of people in, uh, and hopes in their domestic environments and the growing importance, complexity, and power of international society, whether one thinks of it as an economic set of relationships, political, cultural influences, and that we see simultaneously a tremendous growth in, in the thick networks that connect countries and create this international society, and yet growing gaps between public opinion in so many countries and these international organizations, institutions, practices, and norms. And we can see that in election results in many countries. Perhaps last night in the state of Virginia, we saw a little bit of that here in the United States, but we can certainly see it in Europe and in many other places. We see, I think, above all, in reaction to the, for, to the power, and in some cases the culturally alien or economically disturbing nature of this international society, we see a kind of a growing force and power to sub-global identities. In some countries, this takes the form of nationalist identity. But we can certainly see, say, in the Middle East, where religious and cultural identities have developed a new salience that's quite troubling, perhaps particularly today if you live in the city of Mosul. And diplomats everywhere, whatever country they represent, need to be need to learn how to bridge this divide to the extent that it's possible they need to in one sense 
understand the nature of the developing international system, its complexities, the demands, the forces that it exerts on all of us, but they need to understand how both in the country they represent and the country in w to which they are sent, how the, um, the divergence between the domestic politics and culture and the international system shapes perception, shapes understanding, and also limits the political space that governments and other actors have to try to manage these, this problem. This is a core problem of every diplomat in virtually every negotiation. Um, and to master this to the extent is possible requires a deep knowledge of the culture of the home country, the culture of the country one is engaged in, a profound of the development of international society and the international system, and then I think great human wisdom to be able to speak intelligently across this divide and to this divide. The world badly needs diplomats with this capability. I hope that I, I I'm congratulate, by the way, that uh, the foundation on the presence of so many young people today at this meeting and I hope some of you will think about this because these problems will only become more urgent as you move through the next steps of your careers. I don't think our educational institutions or our political life is very good yet at creating, the, at, at, at helping people develop the kind of wisdom that this is going to require. But I would suggest that for all of us, this is a subject we need to study in much greater depth. And any ability any of us have to shed light on that will make a tremendous positive contribution to the ordinary business of states, as well as the extraordinary business of trying to build a civilization in the 21st century that is encompassing enough to include all human beings in some way within it and yet flexible enough so that local identities, local values, cultures, understandings can find some measure of stability within it or otherwise the 21st century could be even more difficult and dangerous than the one that we so narrowly escaped in a sense by the skin of our teeth, the 20th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. I'm going to...